All right. So I was kind of debating on where I should start with this podcast, uh, this episode. Um, but I guess about it, probably a good place to start is what exactly you do, because you're a motorsports photographer. You're the staff photographer for Lime Rock. But what I learned, you know, just working alongside you a bit last year and Marley weekend is you don't just take pictures of race cars. You know, you hear motorsports photographer, oh, you just take pictures of race cars. You do a lot more than that, especially being a track photographer. So can you expand on that? Like what, what is your job essentially? Uh, my job. So there's me and one other guy, uh, Greg Clark. And we, um, our job is essentially to be everywhere all at once. Um, I guess that's the best way to put it. So no matter what is going on, um, around the track uh, it's our job to be there one of us has to be there more often than not so on any given day um probably spend about half of my time half of my shooting time yeah i said 40 50 percent of my shooting time um actually out on the track and and you're really banking those those you know that dynamic stuff but you know i have to um I mean, I have to think about sponsors and signage and making sure that that's all showcased and highlighted, whether it's in the background of a moving race car or it's like that's really just a picture of FCP Euro's new sign somewhere. Um, and then um, the rest of the day, I mean, a lot of it is scheduled out. So the national anthem, all that ceremonial stuff before a race starts, all the fan walks, Um uh, I'm, I'm very often, I'm in the starter stand for the starter braces, you know, getting the green flag. Cause there's always somebody special up there, you know, Senator or somebody. Um, and then, um, yeah, I mean, we work in the paddock, we work on the midway, we work in the, on the hillsides, uh, and if, if, for anybody who maybe hasn't been to Lime Rock before, um, there are no grandstands at Lime Rock, you know, Sam, I mean, you were a volunteer there, but, um, uh, yeah, when I say the hillsides, that's like our grandstands. It's our version of that. People show up with their picnic blankets and camping chairs and coolers and stuff, and that's what they do. And so my, I'm out there looking for anybody who looks interesting, anybody who looks, um, what was the word they use? They, they give us uh, stylish. They want stylish people. <laughs> and we always, our joke is always kind of like, have you been to Lime Rock? Um, you know, it's it's outside in July um essentially in a park you know people aren't really dressed stylishly for the most part but you find them there are people who will get dressed up um i'm always looking for kids uh i think for me i'm i grew up at lime rock my first race there was in 1985 um so i was there when uh when rob dyson won in his 956 um actually i, I have a the oldest picture of me is my brother and i in 1980, 1986 so um yeah so it's like you know I think I'm always looking for that next generation when I'm out there, you know, where are the kids families having fun, you know, dad sharing it with their sons and daughters and stuff. And um, yeah. I and mean, then as far as like other things I'm working and what I'm shooting. Um, yeah. One of my like standing sort of assignments is what we call the woo shot, which is it's just me and Greg giving it a name, but it's um, essentially it's the guy, it's the driver getting out of the car out of the winning car. So I have to be wherever that is. You have to know beforehand um, to get Chris Dyson or, you know, wh whoever who won this year. I don't even remember who won. Uh, it was the, the FAF Porsche won at IMSA, right? Oh, uh, it was the, the plaid, the plaid Porsche. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh shoot. Who's in that car? Uh, Jamming it. He's jamming, jamming it. Jamming it. Jamming it. Yeah. Yeah. So I had to get him getting out of the car. And of course, you know, he looks right at the, the TV camera and big thumbs up and stuff. So I sort of have to, either include that which i do but then i also have to hope that he like i call his name if, or hope that some you know the team photographer's nearby who knows who this person is um you know and just try and hopefully they'll look my way and get something something good i mean the best ones are always the guys who climb on the roof of the car you know uh but that doesn't happen as often as you would hope <laughs> um, no, it never and does there, and they never look your way the, either no they do they do i've got a great shot of um joey hand where he just sort of shot me this look after getting out of the four GT back in, I think it was 19. And uh, he just like gave me this like classic look. I love it. And yeah. Um, yeah. And then it's, it's run across the paddock to victory circle and get that too. And I'm always the second in victory circle. Uh, Greg is usually already there. 
And so my job a lot of times is I'll, I'll keep the 70 to 200 on and get some close up stuff or maybe try and get sort of an off angle and include the crowd and stuff. Um, yeah, but it's all kinds of stuff. After that, um, after the track goes completely cold and dark, uh, there's very often uh, like VIP dinners, uh, catered dinners and stuff and special speakers. And of course, Skip and Sam are at all of them. And um, so, yeah, we have to shoot that, too. It's like shooting a wedding reception after a race day, which is, uh, you know, as you can imagine, we probably don't smell great. Um, <laughs> so it was a long days. But uh, uh, yeah, so it sort of runs the gamut. Uh, we're also in charge of the safety meetings. We are in the media room. We're like, it's me, Greg, and uh, Amy Greenway, who is um, sort of in charge of the media center there. And so three of us are the go-to for everybody. And so, you know, people hunt us down out on station. They'll find us anywhere, at, literally anywhere. Like these photographers will just find us. Um, and that's great. And it's fine. And, and you know, the more help that we can give those guys, the better. So, um, yeah, so we have we have a pretty <laughs> it's a pretty broad spectrum throughout the day of what we're shooting and, and what we're looking for. No, absolutely. So you mentioned like you have like you do kind of you allude to having a shot list. Now, do you get that? And that's just final or do you get the pieces and then do you have to put that together and then kind of work out a schedule or does somebody just hand that to you like here, here's what we're doing. This is what we got to do. So we work off of uh, two shot lists simultaneously. Um, so our we have a season long shot list, um, which is pretty overarching and the stuff you keep in the back of your head pretty much at all times. Um, and then about a week before the event, we'll get an event specific shot list, which is like ever changing pretty much uh each day so essentially how it works is each day the lime rock team not us the the media team the marketing team they have a meeting like first thing in the morning go over minutes to minutes or just go over the day run through everything um you know who's going you know do we have a vip such and such waving the flag or who's singing national anthem whatever and so then we'll get all these updates after the fact so after the safety meeting, me and Greg meet with Amy, who was in that other meeting, and the three of us sit down and we get all of our updates uh, to our shot list. And then after we have that, Greg and I then go and meet together to nail down who's going to be where and when. Um, and it's sometimes like down to like the minute. It'll be like at 116, you have to be here. And then at 118, you have to be here. And um, so, yeah, that's, that's essentially how that goes. And uh, it's actually... It's funny. I'm actually working on a like a camera club talk about all of this. So I have some stuff out right now. Perfect. Um, so I actually wear this. It's like the thing that quarterbacks wear. I found one of those at a yard sale like last last summer, and I haven't used it yet. But I'm going to use it this weekend for the first time. Yeah, yeah. So like, uh, I have like just notes inside from like my season long one, so I don't forget about things. So like after each event, I'll sort of go through and figure out like. What did I miss? Maybe what wasn't great for this event will be better at IMSA, that kind of thing. Um, and then up here is my like minute to minute for the day. And it says 110, Corvette Corral laps. 122, Sam Posey is going to be in the car doing a lap. So you got to get Sam Posey. At 130, ceremonies, I have to be under the tower for the ceremony, which starts at 135 and then shoot the green flag from the starter stand. And then on this particular day uh, at 530 was when they renamed No Name Straight to, Sam, uh, to Paul Newman Straight. So it was my job that day to get the uh, the Budweiser toast from the hillside. You ever so, get a wicked tan line from note. that? What's that? You ever get so, uh, there's a bit of a delay? You ever get a wicked tan line from that? No, because uh, once I reach a point, like once it got to one thirty, I I took it off. You know, I just I, I wear it as long as I need to, and it really does sort of get you through. Because um, after, especially like that would have been historics weekend so after 1 30 you've been to historics like it's the same nine groups go out from the morning they just go out again in the afternoon so you don't once you get through all the ceremonies and stuff at historics you're pretty much you don't need a shot list from there you just go out and and work so all right so anybody hasn't been to lime rock park now this is where i cut my teeth this is where you said you were cut your teeth it's it's a very unique facility it is very unique to any other racetrack. Like you said, there's no grandstands. It's a hillside. Like if you go to Lime Rock Park, the place you're most likely going to really, they kind of push people towards their signage and stuff is the spectator hillside. And with that, you know, when they say, 
I get on a weird tangent here. They say Lime Rock Park. It, it literally is a park. And the access yeah. a fan has at that place is unreal. So for the most part, yeah. Yeah. I mean, for the most part, in I mean, pretty much anywhere there's like two or three spots that photographers, like credentialed ones, can shoot that fans can't. How much of that mm. time do you like give or take, give or take? There's big access. How much, How much of that time, time do I spend shooting from like spectator actual, areas? Like, oh, shoot just shooting from spectator room areas. <clears throat> yeah. Um uh I mean, probably not a lot if I'm not shooting the spectators. <laughs> I shoot the spectators an awful lot. So I do find myself up there. Um, and then and what ends up happening is I find different angles to then shoot through spectators and include them in the photo um, and just trying to find like big, you know, big wide scenes because Lime Rock is really good for that. Um, as far as like shooting the actual racing from spectator areas, um, I mean, I have my favorite go-to areas that are not spectator areas. And so those are obviously not included. Um, if the if the uh, campground is full, like IMSA, I like to shoot through. I like to shoot from the campground area. Um, I actually find that once you get through that cattle gate that's at the, you know, the bottom of the hill there, uh, the angles there are okay. They're not great. Uh, there's one or two decent shots through there, but uh, I don't spend much time there. I'll end up back up in the actual campground. And looking for like, how do I put, how do I include spectators? How do I include the campground? Or just that feeling of like the camping chairs and all of that. Um, Cause it, it is this, especially again, especially historics, it's very relaxed. Like no matter where you go, there's just guys like, they're like making some sausages on a grill or they're just like kicking back in their camping chairs. And it, it really just always reminds me of like just a day out with the guys and, and or, you know, you've got you know, a little vacation with the family. Um, yeah, it's funny you mentioned that it's a park. Like that's how Skip Barber refers to it. Skip always called it. Um, it was a, it's a it's a park that happens to have a racetrack running through it. That's always how Skip referred to it, and uh, I always thought that was that was poignant. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's uh, there's great there's great angles from uh, the paddock area um, through the S's. A lot of times I'm on like the the credentialed side, but right up against the fence. I might as well be in the spectator area, because if you can get up the hill just slightly, you can look over the cars and actually include that full S, which is nice. There's not a lot of that at Lime Rock, so you know, I'm always looking for that if I can find it. Um, yeah, the hillside, uh, those two spectator areas over by the Bailey Bridge too. So the one, especially on the as you're coming in, the one on the left that looks down the hill. Yeah, I shoot from there a lot, actually, because you can really I can really use the compression of the long lenses to include the spectators, but also have the race cars in the background and have them sort of like, you know, going off of, you know, going off the frame a bit. Um, yeah, I mean, I there's there's a lot of good angles. If you're a spectator at Lime Rock, you can get to a, you can get to a lot of places. I mean, there are certainly some places like the real prime locations are off limits, <laughs> but that's the same as any track, right? I mean, it's like yeah. outside of Big Ben first thing in the morning, right? That's the shot that everybody wants first thing. Um, yeah, that you need you need to be credentialed to be there. Um, or like outside of turn four, uh, drivers left on turn four, uh, right after lunch, just as the sun sort of gets. Because eventually, at that time, it just comes straight down No Name Street, well, Paul Newman Street. I'm gonna get used to that this year. Yeah, um, gonna be, that's gonna be crazy. <laughs> yeah, but then, but then you're working with the sun at that point, so the sun is actually illuminating the front of the car. Um, and you know, in that time of day, you know, one, one thirty, two o'clock. I mean, if it were up to me, I'd just take that part of the day off. But um, you don't get that option. You know, it's that's when IMSA almost always lets they always put the uh, the weather tech cars out there for practice at like noon or it's so it's like you know emsa weekend is so jam-packed that it's just keep going just keep going out there and um yeah and of course like you know drivers left in the uphill you know that's all off limits as well so i mean it's but from a spectator area I'm trying to remember back to when i was a spectator uh that short shoot between big bend and the left-hander that's a great spot if you're a spectator uh, you're close you can get a nice pan through there Anywhere along the fence line on the inside hillside, you know, in, in the infield part of it. Um, and then the west, the whole west bend, that whole like back straight to the bridge, 
you're close throughout that whole stretch. Um, and you can get pretty creative. I'll, I I do work from the spectator area up there sometimes. Just because you can, it's almost like the the um, the credentialed areas are almost too close in the in that in the stretch. Like there's just nowhere to work. Like right? you can't take a step back. So a lot of times I do work those areas from like the skid pad and stuff like that. Especially yeah, if there's a, especially if there's a car corral in there, because then you can use the roofs of the cars as like a foreground element. Yeah, I don't know. This is the kind of things I look for. No, absolutely, and I think that's important to you know remember is like. A lot of photographers I talk to that, you know, they shoot from the spectator areas a lot. And mm -hmm. you don't need to have, you know, when I was starting up cutting my teeth, you know, I was like, well, I wish, you know, I wish I had that. But like, you really don't need a credential and to get all those good, like, you know, good spots to create amazing pictures. Like, I've seen some amazing work that you've done. One of the pictures we're going to talk about later, I believe you took from a spectator area, the um, vintage weekend yeah, from last studs. year. Yep. Yep. And you, you don't need that. And even then, like you get some things you can do inspect like shooting through fans and stuff. You're not gonna get that from a credentialed area. And I can't think of a better track with more access for the fans than Lime Rock. There's so many places to shoot there without any sort of credential or vest. Yeah, I mean I I, I haven't been to enough tracks to be, if I'm honest. Uh, to know that for sure. Um, but like when I think of the tracks I've been to, um, you know, Watkins Glen was, they put up the catch fencing. So it's, if you're a spectator, you can pretty much shoot the boot and there's not much else. Um, I know that because I showed up to my first ever Watkins Glen event uh, credentialed, but I missed the meeting. <laughs> I got there too late. So I missed the safety meeting and they wouldn't give me a vest. So I had to just like, they're like, you can go out and work if you want, but you know, can't have the vest. I made sure I made the safety meeting on day two. Uh, it was a six hour. The, it was a one of the six hours, and yeah. So I did find out sort of the hard way that the only decent, you know, track shots at the Glen, if you if you're not credentialed, uh, I think there's a decent shot as they came out of the boot, um, from that camping area there. Mm -hmm. Like yep. you didn't need to be credentialed from there. Um, but really, once you got into like the S's and stuff, the catch fencing was so high, you were always shooting through it, and you know. If you, if you, you know, your glass is long enough, you can get away with that, but uh, it's not ideal for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, Miller's, or oh, it's not Miller's anymore, Utah, whatever, Utah Motorsports Complex, same. It, it wasn't really catch fencing, is that the track was so far away. Mm -hmm. There was never really any place where the spectators were right on top of the track the way they are at Lime Rock. Um, the same thing with New Jersey. You know, I shot in New Jersey a few times, and it's the same. There's just, everything, is, so, everything is so far, even credentialed, it's so far away. It is. it is 600 Very millimeters hard. in places isn't enough. Um, and, you know, other tracks, like I've, I've worked all the major tracks up here in the Northeast. Um, Palmer is, uh, that's, I mean, Oof. that's tough, even credential. Palmer's it's, yeah. Palmer's I, if, downright if you, dangerous. If Palmer's you end dangerous. up, oh, Palmer's dangerous. <laughs> if you end up, so I shot um, a SEC track night there last summer. It, I went rock climbing. Like I scaled oh, yeah. like a twenty foot rock wall. It came mm. out awesome for great pictures. I almost stepped on a rattlesnake. I'm like, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. So Palmer, for anybody who doesn't know, Palmer is a racetrack in Massachusetts. It's a private track. It's not open to spectators. So because something to do with the zoning. They've been trying to get it, but anyways. So if it's not with spectators, they kind of none of it's cut out. There's the paddock, and then there's the racetrack, and then it's just wilderness. There's woods. Mm -hmm. There's you know. And they don't even have anything cut out for track workers. They drop them off in a bus. They go make a lap before any session and drop them off the bus. So to get to any photo spot, if you miss that bus ride, that shuttle, you oh, are yeah. climbing and walking through this dense, dense, you know, trees, bushes. I mean, I got so many scrapes on me from doing there. I'm surprised I didn't get Lyme disease, but uh, yeah, there's that's no place be the hardest on track. Yeah, there's no place on earth that has pricker bushes like Palmer Raceway or yeah, whatever they call it, Palmer Motorsports Park. Um, yeah, it's uh, I lost a pair of pants there once. It's like they ripped right through. Right. And like these are the things you don't want. They used to shoot track days with SCDA. I did that for a few years. And so they went to Palmer a few times a year. So I'd go there a few times every summer. And it's close enough for me where I don't need like accommodation. I can just go there and come home. It's about three hours from here. Um but yeah, I never really 
I wouldn't say I didn't like it. The photos, a lot of, a lot of times the photos were okay, but um, I always felt like just one wrong step, <laughs> one wrong step and it's all over, right? This, it's... You trip over the wrong twig and you're going down that rock pile. You're, you're, you are done for because it is on top of a mountain and, and it's, it's like steep. carved out and yeah, it's, it's a beautiful facility. Oh, um, absolutely. It's just not friendly to like what you and I do really. Uh, and there's just no need for it. And that's why, because there's no spectators. But, yeah. I mean, you can't you know, make sense, but I mean, if you put the work in some of my favorite pictures I've ever taken were from that just one track night there. Cause I got like this little rock cliff in the foreground. I'm shooting down <laughs> probably at like a, I don't know, 20 degree angle down on the track. And it's, it's like, you can't get that anywhere else. But in terms of like other road courses in the Northeast, they all are hard to shoot except Lime Rock, like New Hampshire motor speedways road course brutal i don't know if you ever shot there or not but. oh i have yeah it's um i mean the what do they call it the horseshoe um that uh, as they come carousel? down the hill oh, no. the ball so the road course part of it yeah the yeah ball. the the, the, the ball yeah sucks. um so as they come down the hill and they go through that banked area um i could usually get some decent stuff out of there um from that little wooded area back there inside the fencing which of course there you have to find someone to come open the fence for you. You can't just like go around all by yourself. You need to like constantly get someone's attention to get someone else's attention to come help you. Um, but yeah, they, um, I always, I always enjoy putting the, the up in that area, which felt very lime Rocky almost, you know, it's a wooded area. It's you're close to the racetrack, but you can put like the NHMS grandstands behind the cars, you know, and it's just like an expansive sky. And so it's, it's a really unique image. Um, but yeah, as they come off of the road course, it's just, yeah, it's, it's, there's not a lot there really. I mean, um, and I think, I, I don't know, maybe I'm just spoiled with the amount of time I spend at Lime Rock and, and my knowledge of that place and how I can, you know, just work it in my sleep at this point. But, um, yeah, it, you know, Lime Rock is special to me. Always will be. It, it'll never, uh, there's no track I can imagine that will ever live up in my mind. I mean, I've always wanted to shoot Road America. I've always wanted to shoot in Atlanta. Um, Sebring is oh, it's like the the top of the bucket list right now is Sebring to get just to get down there and shoot the twelve hours. Um, you know, I'd love to do a twenty four hour race at some point, just just to say I did it. Like, just I lived through that forty hour day, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I'm I know I know I'm spoiled with Lime Rock. Uh, I know I'm spoiled with the job too. It's you know. You know, one of the things I never forget to do while I'm there is to just like, it's just to sit and sort of just take it in. Um, remember what it was like, you know, to be, you know, eight years old on the hillside, you know, watching the Ferrari 333s. I guess I was a little older for those, but, um, you know, 15, 15, 16 years old and watching the 333s and the, uh, the those Dyson, Riley and Scott's. Um, and there was a couple years there in the, in the mid to late 90s where they had Trans Am and IMSA, what was called sports car at the time, they would be there together on Memorial Day weekend. And those were great weekends, man. You know, in the Trans Am race, you had like Tommy Kendall and Scott Sharp and like Jenna Lozzi and all these, the Archer brothers, like just these turned out to be big names years later. You know, Scott Sharp went on to IndyCar, Tommy Kendall is, is Tommy Kendall now. I mean, um, and then you had, you know, the IMSA guys, you know, with the 333s and the, and yeah, it was just so good. Just such a, so good back then. And it's still so good. I, I, I still think we're kind of in like this golden era. Um, uh, especially with EMSA, like there's, there's something special happening there and I'm happy to see it. And, you know, I wish we had the prototypes coming back. Uh, I think, I, I think that EMSA has decided that uh, they're too fast for our, for our little bull ring, which is funny because PJ Jones did it in 43 seconds and he survived, but you know, <laughs> Yeah, I was there for that. I was I was there when PJ Jones set that. It wasn't all that long ago we had prototypes either. It was only like 10 years ago, besides the prototype challenge that they brought back for like 2017. Yeah, it was 2013 uh, would have been the last. That was the last LMS year. It was 2013. And so that was the last year that we had prototypes there. And that would have been uh, with Dyson had a, his Lola Judd, I think. And um, the Muscle Milk, the Muscle Milk HPD. Was it, that was a, quite the car. I know those guys never got the credit they deserved in the end, but uh, yeah. And, and yeah, I miss, I miss seeing the prototypes. 
you know, they were, they were a lot of fun, but you know, I love what they're doing with the GT3 categories now and how they're combining them and the pros and the AMs and the, uh, it's great racing. And in the end, that's all I really care about. I just want great racing to shoot. Don't really care who wins. I'm not there rooting for anybody. Oh, well, I mean, they're rooting for Dyson. If Dyson's racing, I'm rooting for Dyson. You know, he's from up the road. Yeah. And so if you don't, uh, if anybody knows that I'm, uh, the Dyson family there, they practically own the place in terms of, you know, Trans Am sports car racing, you know, any of that, you know, they, like you said, not far from the road. Actually, my dad went to school with some of them because he grew up down with them. Um, Basically just like up there with Skip Barber and, you know, Sam Posey in terms of just legendary people that race at Lime Rock, Paul Newman as well. And yeah, yeah. I would say Dyson, like the Dyson family, um, you know, first with Rob and now Chris and who, I mean, Chris's kids are pretty young still, but um, yeah, there's sort of like Lime Rock royalty in their own right. You know, they're, they're from Poughkeepsie. It's what, 40 minutes away or whatever it is. Um, and yeah, I mean, they've been there since 1985 and we've all been rooting for them since then, you know, and, and if they've been there in every iteration, like through every era of racing, they were there for it. You know, they had the 962s and then they had the Riley and Scott's and then during ALMS, they had the Lola's and then, and now Chris is in Trans Am and he comes every Memorial Day. So, and has won three years in a row. I've got a lot of good woo shots of Chris Dyson. <laughs> Usually pretty good he, for him. Yes. And he always shows up too, man. Like he doesn't just come over and win. Like he comes over and runs away with it. Yeah. And, oh yeah. And it's like, and it's not like he's racing against nobody. He's like, he's leaving Ernie Francis in, in the dust, you know, and Ernie I don't Francis, know Boris Lime Said, Rock, but... you know, Tommy Dreesy, all of them. Yeah. Oh yeah. So he's, uh, and like last year it was flag to flag. It was great. Yeah, I've got this great like series of photos from last year. Um, so Rob was grand marshal of the race. So he did like gentlemen start your engine. So I got that. And then I was up in the flagger stand with him as he waved the green flag while Chris went by underneath him. And then I got, you know, it's just some stuff of Chris like running away with the race. And then I got the checkered flag as he crosses the finish line. And then him getting out of the car and like the first thing he does is point at his dad. And then the two of them hugging. Like I got this great series of photos of the Dyson family from last year that uh, I, I absolutely love uh, going back and seeing them. So, you know, that's the joy of my job is I get to, I get to, I have that access to, to put that kind of, you know, series together. Yeah. And you, and you do more than just take, you do more than just like take pretty pictures of that you're telling a story there. Like there's so much oh, yeah. history with those two at this racetrack and to get them in the same place, unless the same frame is like, such a cool opportunity and you know a lot of people don't like think about like some people like not a lot of people but some people don't like to think about that like you know we don't take just pretty pictures of cool cars we take pictures of memories whether it's just the dysons or i mean one of the biggest coolest things that ever happened to me like i was a teenager is it wasn't lime rock but watkins Glen. i ended up on their facebook page because i was just in okay. a picture that one of the track photographers was like you know i'm completely different like i'm not a you know i'm working in the series now like you know motorsports media but that's still like one of the coolest things ever and like i was like you know probably 18 i'm like that's me you know and it's thankless in the sense that you know you don't get credit like for lime rock you know you don't get credit for these lasting memories people have like they don't know who took the picture always you know it's very thankless well i wouldn't say that like maybe i don't maybe it doesn't say photo by sean pierce but it's certainly i honestly working with lime rock i i would never say anything i do is thankless like they are they are wonderful to work with i wouldn't uh, it says the wrong choice of words but <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i mean and the thing is 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 they see us you know running around the place you know and that's like no matter what's going on one of us is there and so they they know how much we run around and and the work that we put in and um and i think when we do the facebook albums it does say photos by sean pierce and greg clark so it's like maybe not that particular photo it says but no it's one of us it always is um yeah i mean it's my job to uh that that's my job my job is to tell the story my like when uh in the mornings when greg and i meet a lot of times we talk about like what is the story we're telling today so we're on the same page you know what what is it that what is the overarching like we need to tell a story today well what is that story and it helps to have some understanding of who's racing 
you know, what's the series, you know, who's, what does the points look like? You know, do you have somebody running away with the championship? You want to make sure that you get some photos of that. Keeping up with, you know, who's on pole, who's leading the race. Make sure you get, you know, you need photos of the, the pole winner. You need photos of the, uh, you know, the eventual winner. Um, and I, I am, I try so hard to not, uh, to over, I try so hard not to overshoot. So it's like, like, I know some guys who go out there and just come back to the media center with like 15,000 shutters. And I'm just like, geez, I just don't want to go through all that. So, I mean, on an average day, I, I'm probably coming in under 2000 shutters. Really? Just Cause I don't want to overshoot. That's impressive because I think. You know, when I first started, I like I would go to races with my friends and it almost be like a bragging right to who shot the most pictures. And now yeah, that means nothing. <laughs> yeah. Now, now that I'm getting more established, it's a bragging right to see who shoots the least pictures because, you know, at yeah, the end who of the has day, the it's... highest hit rate. Yeah, yeah, that exactly. Well, well, I mean, for me, it's like, you know, yeah, I have to shoot the whole day. At the end of the day, I have to deliver between probably 15 and 30 photos to, to sort of tell the story of the day. Um, and then at the end of the event, they usually, they only want three to 400 photos for the whole weekend because they don't want to go through it all either. So you figure like, you know, think of like, uh, I don't know, IMSA weekend, you know, sometimes there's like last year, there was a fan fest over in New York, uh, Thursday night. So we went and did that, um, which was fun. That was, it was an autograph session and there's kids everywhere. And they had some of the race cars there, like FCP Euro was there and the, the FAF plaid Porsche was there and, just let people get close to these things and and meet some of the drivers. And so we did that. And then you have Friday, which is the lesser of the two days as far as how busy and congested it is. Uh, it's also the lesser of the two days as far as like fan attendance. So th that Friday is the day that I'm banking as much track stuff as I can. I'm just putting it in the bank because I need to fill my order at the end of the at the end of the event. You know, I'll work the, tr I'll, I'll look for anything else that's out there, you know, but really it's like, okay, let's get everything we can now because tomorrow I have two fan walks, two green flags, two victory circles, two woo shots. The hillside is going to be packed. You got to work out there. The, you know, the midway has like vendors up and down it. There's people everywhere. Uh, they need pictures of the car corrals. They need pictures of a full parking lot. They need pictures of the campground. It's just, you have to be in all these different places at once. So you do have to come to it with a plan. And so uh, that's usually my plan is Greg and I do kind of the same thing where Friday is like, get as much of the track stuff in as you can. And you still need some the next day, but, you know, during the IMSA race, it's two hours and 45 minutes. I'll spend probably an hour of that just watching it on TV in the media room. <laughs> at well, that point, like, I don't, I just don't need the cars on the track anymore as far as photos are concerned. And it just lets me be a fan. Like the, the media room, you'd be surprised how full it is in the middle of that race. Like so many of these guys are just like, you know, they've gotten everything they need. So now they just sit back and watch the race. And, uh, and if for those guys, if like, like I have to go get that woo shot no matter what, but if like, if FAF Porsche is not your client, well, you're done for the day, you know? So, um, yeah, yeah. So that's, you know, it's always about having a plan. It's always about knowing where you need to be and when, and if you can do that and know what you need, as opposed to just going out and spraying and praying, um, you're going to you're going to lessen your workload after the fact. Because let's be honest, the amount of time we all spend after an event is that's really up to you. You know how much how much calling do you want to do? How much selecting do you want to do? How much editing do you want to do? Um, probably not as much as we do. <laughs> so, you know, the fun is at the track. The less fun is uh, is like the whole week after. No, that's definitely my least favorite is going through photo mechanic. And then I do a lot of um, not client. I wouldn't know what I call it, but like I'm a social media manager and photographer for a motorcycle series in New Hampshire. And I go mm -hmm. and get 12, 15 usable shots a weekend of every single rider that's there. And that's like a hundred and some bad guys. And it's editing's the worst. Some people yeah. enjoy it. I don't know. God bless you. Like I could never, like it's not. Yeah, I mean, for that kind of stuff, uh, yeah, I mean, I've figured out ways to automate as much as possible, mm -hmm. right? Like with Lightroom actions, uh, no, the Lightroom presets, and then Photoshop actions afterwards. Like um, for me, 
uh, especially for the work I do for Lime Rock, so much of what I give them is going to end up in the hands of a designer, whether it's somebody who's going to put together like, you know, uh, something for social media or, um, uh, I don't have any here. I'm going to say like, you know, you know, like the, the programs and stuff, you know, like anything that's printed, you know, I've got a whole bunch of that kind of stuff here and I think it's all in the other room. Um, so most of what I do as far as editing is concerned is, is the exposure right? Am I clipping on either end? Is the color correct? That's huge for me. Like I, it matters so much to me if the color's right. I mean, these are race cars. They are specific colors. Let's get them right. Um, and then, you know, is it a usable shot? You know, is it something that I really think that they can use? Maybe it's not the prettiest thing in the world. Maybe it's not something that's going to go in my portfolio, but it's usable. So we'll include that. And then that's my initial thought process as I'm culling too. Is, like, is it usable? Is it sharp? Is it whatever? Um, and then as you call down to 300 from the weekend, you, I mean, you, only, you only end up delivering, you know, the absolute best stuff. So um, yeah, that's my approach. I, but when I'm doing stuff for myself, like I actually really enjoy editing. You know, I really love yeah, I enjoy the, the, art, the artsy now. shots, you know, the ones that are just like the portfolio shots are great. I love working with those and just seeing what I can come up with out of it. Yeah, it's it's, uh, you know, and, and by learning how all that works, like at that that really deep level, you know, Photoshop and Lightroom and stuff, when I really enjoyed that editing process, what that's done is it's really sort of defined a style for me. Which I've been able to then using the presets that I make and the actions that I make. I can then translate that style to a much faster process um, that maybe isn't quite as in depth, but it still delivers my work um, as opposed to just, you know, out of camera or, or it doesn't really match what someone's hired me to do. You know, the way I look at it is, you know, I'm hired because, uh, you know, someone goes to my website and they see my work. Well, they hire me because they like what they see. So that's what I want to deliver. Um, and that goes for any kind of my photography, you know, like, uh, like I'm sitting in my studio right now. This is my, this is my office in my studio. And, uh, you know, I had a headshot session this afternoon. Same thing though. Like if you go to my website and you see the headshots and stuff, uh, there's a style to it. There's a specific like, people hire me because they like that and they come in and that's what they want. So, you know, it's the same with the motorsports, the same with anything I do, you know, uh, just, I want to be as consistent as I can. I want it to be replicatable. I want to, um, yeah, I don't want there to be a question whether or not the job's getting done. Ever. Dependent. And when something's asked of me, the answer is as often as physically possible, the answer is always yes. When I'm at the track. They come to me and say, We well, want this. All right. Even if I have no idea how I'm gonna do it. The answer is no, yes. That, that's a, that's a good piece of advice I got from my buddy Wayne Regal. So he was uh for people listening, he's on an early episode of the podcast. Um he's a photographer for the superstar racing experience which is kind of like a rebirth of IROC that Tony Stewart did. And he's just like, it's, he. this really resonated with me. Um, he got just like a piece of advice he gave me for a lot of different opportunities. Just like, yes. And if you don't know, you'll figure it out, you mm -hmm. know, because if you have a deadline and you got a motivation, you will figure it out, you know? And yeah, well, I mean, always, you can always rely on, on, you know, your craft. Right. So if you know your craft, it shouldn't matter what's asked of you. Right. If you if you know what you're doing um, and you've put in that time and that effort and that work and you've paid some of those dues, uh, you shouldn't have to. It shouldn't even really be a question. Someone says, hey, I need blah, blah, blah. Maybe you have an opinion about, you know, the positioning of something that maybe it could be changed because it's, you know, the lighting is not great that time. Like. Like, you know, at Lime Rock, I can tell you any time of the day where the sun will be, even during the, like the difference between May and September, right? I mean, it's, I know these things because I spend so much time there. And so I might have an opinion about, you know, maybe the positioning of something isn't quite right or whatever. It doesn't matter. Like, you want, you know, that opinion is not relevant in the end. And it's, this is the way it's being done. And, you know, like, you know, last year, Historics, they, um, they changed where we did the uh, so during Sunday in the park the uh, the car show Sunday. Um, they changed where our stage was, so usually it was out on the track. They'd come across the Lime Rock Star finish line, and that's where the stage would be, and it was wonderful because you know the sun's right behind you. <laughs> it's perfect, you know, one o'clock in the afternoon. Um, 
or three or whatever time it is. But this year they put it, it someone had the idea of putting the pagoda behind the big banner, which in the end, I guess is fine, but now you're shooting sort of into the sun. And what ended up happening was the banner, like you could see all the slats from the frame through the banner because the sun would come through and you'd mm. see the shadow of all the slats and you just have to make it work. Um, you know, so like the answer was, yes, we'll do this. This is where, this is where you've set it up. Um, next year, maybe let's think about doing it differently. And that's how, that's how we approached it. Um, you know, uh, but you run into that, you know, you just have to say yes and you have to roll with it. And, uh, sometimes lighting conditions aren't great. Sometimes it's raining. Sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes it's dark, you know, it's just, that's the way it goes. It's, you know, the, you know, some of my favorite shots are in the rain, you know, so well, rain shots. I know, and I'm all over is, the place here. Like I, I just, I like talking about this stuff. So like I just bounce around and I hope I'm is, answering your questions because <laughs> this is absolutely perfect. I'm just answering questions for the sake of conversation. Just ramble on all you need. But I, when you mentioned shooting in the rain, I love, absolutely love shooting in the rain because you, if you know like the basics of motorsports photography, you can't get a bad picture and you can shoot from anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, you can. I mean, you, I'm always <clears throat> thinking about, like I have my favorite spots to go in the rain at Lime Rock. Um, the end of West Bend, there's a tire wall back there. It's a credential spot, but, um, and you have to be willing to like traverse <laughs> to get back there and <laughs> hope there's no rattlesnakes. Uh, yeah. For those who don't know, like we have a serious rattlesnake problem at Lime Rock, uh, timber rattlers. I've run into them pretty so often. Um, I can confirm. I've also seen one there as well. No, and they're that's they're not small either. They are. No, they're like, big. I've seen them six feet long, and I mean, like this big around. I mean, they yeah. are big old, but they're not. Yeah, you know, they're not aggressive. They, you walk right by them, they don't even know you're there half the time. Um, so yeah, so like step. at the very end of West Bend, as they're coming down, you know, from the uphill, uh, I like that because you can really get a real good head on. But they have a lot of speed there, so you can get a good head on there with big rooster tails. Um, otherwise, I mean, just anywhere where they're where they're kicking up those rooster tails, that's that's what you're after. I mean, so I like to shoot them on on, uh, you know, on the San Posey Street, you know, a little bit from behind and really try to get as much of that rooster tail coming off them. Like, nice slow shutter, like, nice, a lot of speed. Um, yeah, I mean, and you, the other thing you learn if you shoot in the rain a lot uh, is that noise doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, I guess I'm tired of people who are like on it that go on and on about noise. Like I'm shooting something in the studio, yeah, I'm gonna worry about it. But if I'm out in the out in the in the woods of Lime Rock and it's you know pouring down rain and it's dark, yeah, my ISO is whatever it needs to be, and is what it is. You know, I'll live with it. You know, that's where that's where your gear can make up for a little bit of that. But definitely, definitely. So we go back, um, kind of just to your. I guess your day because Lime Rock has we got up to you now four major events. I don't know if we yep. count SCCA or not, but um, so no, we got, but we have grid life, yeah. So, so they got Trans Am Memorial Day weekend, yeah, Trans Am Memorial Day weekend, Trans Am, Memorial Day middle, weekend. Ch middle July, July, middle of August, grid life, grid life is Historic in August, Fest, and then historics is Labor Day weekend. Yep. So all, all of those events, and you've been shooting this track for a long time, so I mean, you know, like the back of your hand, do you ever like? When you go and shoot on track, do you mm -hmm. how often do you try something new? Because you've been to this place so many times, you've shot hours and hours and hours here. Like, what is what is your steps for creative process nowadays? Um, so creative process. Um, a lot of uh, yeah, I'm, I'm always trying something new. I mean, as simple as like, you know, how slow can you go? You know, and I've really been into a lot recently the uh, the wider pans, like wherever I can get them. You know outside of big bend if you got a you know full hillside like really trying to you know put that into some perspective um i think that what's changed the most though is the understanding that you're not taking photos of race cars you know you're telling that story and you're figuring out different ways to tell that story so i mean a, a shot right away that comes to mind is from historics <laughs> last year the very last day of the year i'm not sure if you were there or not but um you know it's it's the very last day of the season, the very last day of historics. And if you go to historics by Monday, just the attrition alone means that the fields are like half empty already. 
And if it rains, forget it. There's like fields of like two cars, right? And they're just like puttering around the track. Someone's out there just trying to get their hat or whatever. Because that's that's their prize. If you if you win the race, you get a hat. It says first place on it. <laughs> I don't know if you knew that or not. That's, that's literally all you I get did, if you win I a did, race yeah. at historics. Um, so, but we also had this, like, <clears throat> if you know Lime Rock, you know that occasionally you get this really dense, like this nice low fog that'll come in sometimes. And so, you know, that morning... Um, we were debating like how much did we actually need um, you know how valuable are these shots where it's kind of raining and dark and you know we've got everything else from the rest of the weekend so I just went out and it was really just okay well let's just get creative then I don't there is no safe shot here I don't need anything here anymore so I went out to Big Bend because I could look across the track from the media room and see that fog on the mountains so my goal then was okay let's get kind of wide um, try and put something that was really lime rock specific, something that was really going to identify the area or you know identify the track. Uh, and I chose the FCP Euro Bridge from that outside of Big Bend. You can look back and see that. And I got one of the one of like a Bugatti Type 35 or something coming through Big Bend under the bridge with that fog in the background and like raindrops in the air. Uh, it's not a super slow pen, didn't need to be. You know, you won't be able to read FCP Euro because you know they're a title sponsor, but um, but yeah, it was just my, my attempt at, um, you know, contextualizing the day a little bit. And yeah, so, I mean, there's a, I think context is the, is the thing that has changed the most over the years as I've done this, when I first started doing it editorially, um, working, you know, magazines or websites or whoever would credential me, um, you know, that was taking pictures of race cars. Now it's about, you know, selling Lime Rock. Really, in the end, I mean, that's my job is to make Lime Rock look as good as possible. So, you know, and that that's warts and all, you know, not every Lime Rock's a very beautiful place and not every corner of it is in like tip top shape. You know, uh, I've never seen anywhere in my life where they can, no matter where you point your camera, there's going to be a porta potty in the background. <laughs> it just doesn't seem to matter. But they took our recommendation and I, no I noticed this year that they were green and not blue. So at least they blended in a little, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, a slow enough pan, you know, you don't notice it. Well, yeah. Well, if they were with the old blue ones, it didn't matter what you did. Yeah. Slow right. pan, hard, you know, head-on shot was fast shutter. It doesn't it? Didn't matter. And you, you could like you be f one, <laughs> and you could still see a blue porta potty in the background. You know, it's just a little blurry, and uh, and it was no doubt what it was. You know, <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I think that's the big difference that has come with just the experience of it all is, is how do I contextualize the race weekend uh, at Lime Rock with the cars, with the goings on? Um, yeah, and I'm, I think it's part of why I don't overshoot is I'm not after all those safe shots. Like, you know, I'll get a few of them just because I want to make sure I have something no matter what. But I honestly don't use them very often because they're, they're just not that dynamic. They're safe and they're boring to me. You know, I'm in a camera club and they all think that they're no matter what I do, everything is great. But it's like, eh, not really, you know. Yeah, it's just, we're, people, we're our biggest don't critics. Know what the job is, so, you know. They see a cool race car and that's it. Like, you know, you're a photographer, like, you know, who specializes in one thing. Like, we're on worst critic critics. Like, you know, I can put up a picture on Facebook that, you know, everybody thinks is cool. You know, I'm like, there's 18,000 things wrong with it. What do you mean? <laughs> like. The, 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 this one sponsor right here there's like six pixels that aren't in focus or you know this this bridge in the background like there's just a little corner you cut off from it you know it's it's yeah we're on our worst critics we are I and mean, these are the things i stopped worrying about as well and i think that you will you'll find that as you grow in the business a little bit and, and to and just grow into what you're doing that uh you'll find the same thing you just stop worrying about that like is the a first number one rule as far as I'm concerned, is is the photo impactful? Does it have, um, like when you look at it, no, forget about the technical side of it all. What's sharp, what's not sharp, you know, compositionally, is it perfect? No, does it have the impact? When you look at it, when somebody looks at it, are they like inclined to not look away, right? That's to me the number one thing. Um, you know, as far as like a panning shot, I always prefer, and I know there's some like disagreement amongst photographers and all this, but I I always prefer for whatever reason, the front of the car to be sharp, like right on the nose. Whereas I know like, you know, I've, I've taken a, a class with Jamie Price um, 
who was like, you know, the legend. Um, wicked nice guy. I got to meet him last year. Um, so that was, that was kind of like a, you know, meet your heroes moment. Just funny because I think he's younger than me. Um, <laughs> but he, uh, but he always talks about he wants the number plate. No matter what, the number plate is the sharp part. That has to be the sharpest part of the car. And also understanding that most places on the racetrack, you're not going to be able to, unless you're doing a straight up side pan, the car's not going to be in total focus. It's just not. Cars, there's a pivot point. So as a car goes around the corner, the nose goes away from you and the back of the car comes towards you. Well, that pivot point all by itself is going to, I mean, that's like a left-hand corner, so the opposite the other way, but um, at Lime Rock, you're shooting from the outside of Lime Rock, that's the direction they're always going, no matter what. Um, but uh, yeah, it's essentially an oval in the end. But, um, but yeah, you start to learn that like, you have to pick what is the most important part to you. And then as you grow into it and you figure that out, it's you stop sweating some of those small details that you're mentioning. Like I rarely ever worry so much about that. If like the composition's off a little bit, I'll crop it to fix that. And I, that's an easy fix. If, um, but if the car is not sharp where I want it to be sharp, I will oftentimes move on. It's just like, you know, like I like to do a three quarter pan a lot as opposed to just that straight side, I like that as they come around the corner. So like the nose of the, like that, that leading edge of the car, that, that headlight that's closest to me, that's what I want sharp. And that's what I think about where is that going to be in the frame before I ever even start taking photos? Like where, where will the, that headlight be in the frame before I even start? Um, so I think these are the things like, I just think with experience, you talk about like how things have changed and how I've grown and what my creative processes are. These are my creative processes, right? I mean, this is it. It's like, but it's come with experience. You know, there was a time, you know, not that long ago, five, six years ago, where it was just like, like just shoot, 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 go crazy, shoot them all. It's, uh, you know, that car's pretty sharp. You know, <laughs> it's nothing, <laughs> nothing a high pass filter can't sort of make look okay. Um, and now I'm a much more, uh, deliberate than I used to be when it comes to this. Um, so say, I know what I want from a location. I know what I want from a shot before I start. And you know, if you can start to, if you, anybody who's, who's new to this or wants to get into this, like you need to learn that. Um, otherwise you just be out there wasting a lot of your own time and, and not being creative. If you're spraying and praying, you're not being creative. In my opinion, you are literally holding down a button and that is all. No, I so agree. I can understand like, like, if you're spraying and praying, like, you know, like what some of the, the big, like, I don't want to say big pros, but like, you know, Jamie Price, Halston Pittman, uh, some of these, um, Drew Gibson, some of these other guys who I end up shooting alongside, um, you know, especially when Imsa is in town, you'll hear them, you know, however many hundred frames a second or whatever. And I don't consider that spraying and praying for them because they are being creatively deliberate. They're also playing it safe because they have clients that they have to deliver to. You know, so you know, there has to be something sharp in there. Um, so, you know, it's like it's it's creatively deliberate, but also, you know, just playing that little safe card of of a lot of shutters, you know, and, I, you know, you can't fault them for that. If I had one client I had to shoot for all weekend, I'd probably do something similar because, you know, that's whereas Lime Rock, I can shoot racing all day. They don't care which car I shoot. You know, they actually want as many cars in the photo as I can get. It's all about shooting racing, not race cars. So, um, yes, but if I'm like there shooting for, I don't know, Lamborghini or something, you know, and there's like a handful of cars, that's all I'm shooting all weekend. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably going to be a little bit less. I'll probably hold the shutter down a little bit more because you're still not going to be overshooting in the end. And, and you're just, there's a little bit of a safe zone there where you make sure you get what you need. Absolutely. So we we'll go back to just getting some in focus. Take an open wheel car. Are you still going for the front of the car or are you going for their helmet? Because I um, see both a lot. Yeah. I mean, for open wheel cars, yeah. Anytime I can see that. Oh, sorry, helmet, open cockpit. My apologies. Yeah. Open cockpit. Anytime I can see, anytime I can see the helmet, yeah, I, I want that sharp if I can get it. Um, I mean, like the bigger prototype cars, not so much like the Can Am cars and stuff at Historics. Um, don't mind if it's the front of the car, but something that's open wheel where there just isn't a lot of car, <laughs> you know, yeah. just visually, they're not as big, you know, they're very small uh, most of the time. So, and, and like the helmet and the hands, like, that's why I like shooting them going through corners because you can get the hands. Um, 
you know. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I shooting track days was that helped me learn to to make sure that the driver is the focus of the shot, not always the car, you know, because I started to realize like these guys who were buying photos from me, they weren't buying pictures of their car. They were buying pictures of themselves driving their car on a racetrack. So it was important that their hands or them or whatever, make sure you can see through the car, you know, through the windshield and all of that. So like I take that on to like shooting any racing now. It's like, I want to make sure that somehow the driver is, is the focus of, of that or, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, I mean, if it's, if you can see the helmet, I, I would prefer the helmet be sharp, but I will take, you know, the car as well. Like if it's a dynamic enough shot, like I'm not going to throw it away because the helmet is off a little bit. Gotcha. So open cockpit and open wheel car. That is one of the pictures you sent me that, um, I guess, I guess I asked you like a picture you're proud of or a picture that you really like, and you sent me one. Um, I don't know how to figure out the share screen thing, but people see it on the screen. I'm sure you know the one I'm talking about. I actually think you were standing right next to me when you took that. I was over there with you, I believe. Was that Memorial Day weekend? The Skip Barber yeah. car? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was yep, from, so that's was... outside of, from the outside of Big Bend. Yep, I was chilling over there with you, so I wasn't too far when you took. So um, can you talk about, because that's a kind of a cool composition where you get most of the car and that opening into the wall. Is that a picture you've taken before? Is that an idea you came up on the spur? Just talk, like... It's something I've tried forever. You know, it's like, you, know, you can't spend hours and hours and hours just trying one thing. So um, it's not like, so where the car is located in that shot is part of it. But for me, it's the it's those layers going back like that it has a lot of depth to it um because of the way that the guardrails sort of overlap and layer through it um and that was always what i was after i wanted to have that layering effect uh it's one of the places at lime rock where there's a lot of expanse you know between where you're shooting and like say like the hillside and there isn't a lot of that at lime rock really in the end i mean you, there's not a lot of places you can go where you can put that kind of distance between you and the background um and so that was one of the uh, I, noticing how those guardrails and those arm codes, especially after they after they redid the pond and added you know additional arm co in different places, um, I, I've been trying to do that shot for years, and it finally got it last year. Um, you know, it's, it's like, and and that was one of the things that you know asked you know, a shot that I was really proud of. I mean, that was a that word proud. It, it threw me off a little bit because I was like, well. There's a lot of photos, a lot of them I shape that I really like, but like this particular one, uh, I think it was just, I finally got the shot. I think it's panned at like one twenty fifth of a second. So it's a really good slow pan. It's sharp right where it needs to be sharp. Um, you know, that going away, like it's sharp right, uh, right at the very back of the car, which I, I really kind of liked. Um, and yeah, just the positioning of it in that, you know, in the opening, um, yeah, it's a good shot. I really enjoyed that one. It's uh, I actually put I actually both of them I sent you. I put in a competition this year, so we'll see. We'll see. Maybe they'll win awards. Um, I doubt it, but you never know. Beautiful. And then the other one that we'll throw on screen right now. So I'm not a car guy. Like I'm a huge motorsports guy, but I don't know the first thing about cars. So I'll let you talk through that one. But we uh, briefly touched on it earlier. Of uh, you shooting through the crowd, which is all in the shade. And the track is perfectly lit. So I've done that shot many times. I always love taking that shot. It's always just that contrast. I always love that. But it took me a while to get the exposure right because, I don't know, it's just such a big contrast. But walk us through that shot as well. Yeah, so, I mean, it's essentially backlit. Um, it's it's pretty close to middle of the day, you know, probably just after lunchtime. Um, and you can tell that there's a little shadow in front of the car. Um, but that means that everything that I'm shooting through is in shadow. Right. And it's, it's all there's there's a giant maple tree there that goes. It's humongous. It's probably the biggest tree on the property there. Um, and so, you know, take advantage of that. Um, I mean, the reason I included this one tonight, though, was just. Uh, you know, I've, I've talked about adding context and like actually telling the story, you know, and I felt like this particular like this photo, the moment I saw it on the back of the camera. I was like, if that's sharp, that's like that's a, a huge winner to me. Because it, uh, it is uh, that whole idea of Lime Rock of like race cars and camping chairs, right? That's what Lime Rock is. There's nothing like that is like, if you're going to define Lime Rock as a spectator, like 
you know, camping chairs and race cars, just sitting around with your guy, your buddies. Maybe there's a cooler in there somewhere, you know, and it shot. It's not, it's not super slow. It probably my go-to sort of safe shutter speed or something like that. It's like one over, so one over 125, you know, somewhere in one over 100, somewhere around there. Um, yeah. My only big concern was the fact that it was a little bit backlit. Um, was there, was, was I going to lose the car in shadow, but thankfully there's enough just ambient light coming off the track and stuff that it, uh, you know, lit it up enough and I was able to pull it out a little bit more, you know, in post. Um, but yeah, that's one of this is one of those shots that, uh, for me, it just captured lime rock in a way, you know, it just really does. And it's, it's one that I really, I really love that shot. It's, it's my, it is literally my, uh, my background, um, on my desktop, like I hear at the office, I see it every day because it also reminds me of being there. Like it's a, it like, you know, Lime Rock itself is like this really special location for me. It's, it has, you know, family history. It has like, my dad brought me there when I was a kid and, you know, and I don't have a tight relationship with my dad. It's, you know, it's what it is. And so we have, uh, but I have that. I can always look back at Lime Rock and um, so, yeah, it just, there's a lot for me, Lime Rock, it's, it, that photo encapsulates, spectatordom if that's a word uh at lime rock um and it, and it helps to, it really helps to tell the story you know especially with the with the stuts uh which what's that's the car is it's a stutz uh <laughs> s-t-u-t-c um i don't know what i don't know what the model number and all that is who knows um greg and i refer to that whole class of cars as the farm equipment so <laughs> It's like the tractors right on the racetrack. That's essentially what they were back then. You know, they, they, you know, the 1920s or whatever that car, I think that car might be from like the teens even certainly pre-war. Yeah. It's, uh, they're not moving old. too fast. They're cool, but no, not, no, not like the alphas in that same group that, uh, those alpha, those old alpha eight C's are legit fast. Like it takes a lot of balls to put those cars around the track. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's why I like that one. Uh, I also, I'm a huge fan of contrast. I love, I don't want anything like contrast creates depth and like a feeling of, of like you're peering in through into a scene. And that photo has that as well. Like you're almost like you're like a, it has a voyeuristic out, you know, sort of feeling to it. You're looking in on scene. Um, and then, and then that contrast, like the, the, the story just sort of tells itself. And so I, uh, I love that one. Um, yeah. And the other one was just a matter of, uh, yeah, I was, I was proud that I finally got it. I've been trying it for years. Um, now I know what to do. I'll get it again this year. Absolutely. And so those two pictures, I'm sure you're in your portfolio on your website, along with many other amazing pictures. Sean is one of the, like, you were a huge inspiration for me, up and coming. Still are. I mean, because that Lime Rock's my, I call it my living room. Even though it's an hour away, it's my home track, you know, and that. Yep that's where I cut my teeth and you have always been a helpful resource. And, you know, you, you alluded to like earlier is like, you know, the next generation, I think you referred to me as like the next generation at one point too, just motorsport photography, but you pay that forward. And I've, you know, I've seen it, I've seen you do it with other people, you know, I mean, it's just like little things. Like I remember like I was like 19 and you followed me on Instagram. That was a big deal. Like, oh, you know, Sean Pierce <laughs> followed me on Instagram. And then I've told you this before, but like two years ago, it started downpouring and, you know, Trans Am weekend. And I didn't have a, you know, jacket with me. And you picked me up in the golf cart just to give me a ride as, you know, safe oh, safety, yeah. I guess. And, you know, you asked me my name and he's, I was like, oh, Sam Jason. And he's like, oh, yeah, I follow you. And then we chat for a bit and you're like, you know, you do good work. Keep it up. And I think I told you that before, like, that's what like you literally you just saying that was the reason I pursued this as a career. I'm like, oh, huh. you know, I got I got noticed by somebody, you know, I got noticed by somebody I looked up to. And, you know, maybe, you know, maybe I can do this as more of a hobby. And last summer I lived off of it. So I yeah. I can never give you enough like thanks for that, because that was like a huge moment for me. You know, definitely. And I'm sure that has been reciprocated. Like you, you've done that for other people as well. Yeah. I, well, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm flattered that, that me following on Instagram mattered that much. Um, but, to an 18 uh, year old, it does. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, uh, yeah. I mean, you say pay it forward. I mean, that's, the, I think we should all be doing that. 
to be honest, I mean, I, I don't know. I Where I live in New Hampshire, I mean, there's other photographers. I mean, I'm the only like major, I guess, I don't know, there may be other motorsports photographers around here. I don't know. I don't know any of them. Actually, Deb, Deb Weil O'Day lives not far from here. She lives in Kensington. Um, but she's she's really more on the vintage scene. Um, so she she works mostly like the vintage uh, racing scenes. Uh, she's good at what she does too. Um, I just don't see it as like this stupid competition, right? It's like like I can tell someone they do good work. It, it is why would you not? You know, it's uh, exactly. you know like you know I mentioned I, I, I'm a member of a camera club. I started that camera club here because I wanted to pay it forward and give it back. And, and, you know, it's I remember back in the day, Sammy Sosa, I don't know if you're a baseball fan or not, uh, but back in like the late nineties, when Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire are going on uh, their home run thing in 98, um, Sammy Sosa is being interviewed and he says something along the lines of, uh, you know, baseball has been very good to me, you know, and uh, I feel the same way for me about photography. You know, it's uh, photography has been very good to me. I haven't had a day job since 2017. You know, like this has been it, you know, for going on six years now. Um, this is my sixth season with Lime Rock coming up. Uh, literally just sent the finished, just signed the finished contract today, actually. Awesome. Um, so that was exciting. It's always nice to get that off the players. You know, at this point in the this the whole process, it was pretty much, you know, done deal. It was just I had to actually sign it and send it back. But um, it's just nice to have it done. You know, my credentials are all set up and ready to go and. Hopefully they'll have some new shirts for me because they changed the logo. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm always looking for ways to give it back where I can, be a helper where I can. Um, if anybody sees this, you're at Lime Rock, you see me around, you know, flag me down. You know, I will stop and talk with you no matter who you are. If you're on the spectator side, if you're in the media room, it's your first time there. You've been there a million times. I don't care. Let's talk. Let's, you know, let, introduce yourself. Come say hi. I, I'm always up for it. It's actually, it, it still catches me off guard when I'm like wearing my hat with my own logo on it. And someone from the spectator side will be like, hey, you're Sean. I'll be like, yeah. You know, like <laughs> I have fans. It's weird. Um, but yeah, it happens sometimes. And uh, yeah, and, and as you grow into, as you get older and you get in the business more and more and more, you'll start doing the same thing because you'll see the next generation coming up. And we should all recognize how important just to motorsports in general, how important is the next generation? It is literally everything. If we want it to be there when we're old, right? So young fans, young photographers, young people who want to get in and work with the, you know, actually work on the cars and, and young drivers, like young marketing people who want to get involved in that way. You know, young people who take the time and volunteer, you know, I think people don't realize that a lot of these big racetracks, a, a lot of the, employees at these big events or volunteers they're not getting paid you know the guy who parked your car <laughs> he didn't get paid to do that he's there on his own reconnaissance that's been i think that's how i met you you were volunteering uh you were one of the right-handers yeah driving you know, that so, golf cart yeah exactly so you know i just think that uh, the more that we do that the people who are quote-unquote insiders you know, no matter how, what that means to you in your career, um, the more you spend a little bit of time every time you're at the track, you know, for me, like it's as simple as high fiving a little kid as I walk by them, taking him in and say, are you having a good time here at Lime Rock? You know, because, you know, I consider myself an ambassador while I'm there. And so, you know, Greg and I are both we both do that. You know, we'll step out of the media room and you know where the media room is right next to the, the gift shop. And there's a little balcony there and there's chairs and stuff set up. If any time we step out, if there's someone sitting in one of those chairs, grown up, old, young, doesn't matter, with kids, without, we'll take a second and just, are you having a good time? You know, just take that second and recognize someone and, and see them and talk with them. And you'd be amazed how far that goes, you know. So, yeah, if you if you get a chance, you know especially the young people, the next generation, <clears throat> you know, just, just take that minute to, you, you know, personally how, how much you can, like it, that moment picking you up in the golf cart and saying, Hey, I think you do good work. You know, that was, it was honest. It was real, but you know, I went <clears throat> in the media center and got back to work. <laughs> yeah. You, know? you remember it forever. And I, I have the same stories, you know, coming up, you know, it's uh, the guys who like David Yao was one of the first guys. I don't know if you know David or not. Yep. Um, he was one of the first guys. I went out to Utah uh, 
to cover a world challenge race. Um, and David was there and I had never been there. I didn't know the lay of the land. And, and if the, the place is gigantic. It's human. Like Lime Rock is, you're so spoiled how small it is. You get out to like the Glen or, you know, Utah and some of these other tracks. You just have four and a half miles around, <laughs> you know, it's crazy. And so, uh, but David, you know, told me like, be here at this time, follow me, you know, just let me sort of work with him for a while. And now anytime I see David, I'm like, you know, I'm so excited to see him. You know, he's, uh, he's great, you know, and whenever you go to a new track, find out like, who are the locals, you know, who are the guys who literally know this place inside and out? Because it doesn't mean the track photographers necessarily. Yeah, there's me and Greg, but I can list off a number of guys who just like they're at every event at Lime Rock. You know, Don Miliano, Michael DePleco, uh, 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 Dow, uh, Dow Smith. Uh, you know, that mo honestly, most of them are on the older side these days, but that's also why it's important. You know, if you if we want this whole thing to continue forward, you know, we have to help foster the next generation uh, and really build that interest in them as much as we can. So no, I'm excited. To, I've been excited to watch you um, grow. You know, this little uh, you're running essentially a media company at this point. I mean, that's pretty impressive. That's uh, I would have could have never seen that that day in the golf cart. Uh, that this is what Sam was going to end up doing, right? So it's you know, it's huge. It's huge, and I, I'm really excited to see it for you, and you know, happy to do this for you, and um, look forward to you know, if obviously we'll be shooting next to each other at some point this year. So I'll pick you up in the golf cart again if it starts raining. <laughs> and it will it will start raining at some point i promise you i've never had a whole year where it didn't rain oh yeah i mean like last year i shot one imsa race four nascar races and at one point uh, every single weekend we had a rain delay i'm a rain magnet so if i'm there it'll rain for sure but thank you for those kind words of course man like i really appreciate everything you've done for me and like i'm really excited to see what happens um so where can people find you you got a lot of amazing work you also got your own photo studio as you mentioned too which is producing some amazing work so where can we find you website social media everything so everything now um is under studio 279 uh it's the name of my studio here um and and the whole business has been sort of rebranded into that uh just because the vast majority of my work now is is you know as far as paying work and stuff has nothing to do with race cars anymore um lime rock is you know pretty much it as far as my racing photography these days um i would take on more if it came my way but you know you gotta make money where you can um so yeah so everything now is is studio 279 um to studio 279.com uh same on instagram mm -hmm. facebook um those are the only two i bother with i don't you know i don't need twitter i just don't need that in my life um <laughs> Uh, but I mean, like the Sean Pierce photography, like all the old stuff is still out there. If you go to Facebook, Sean Pierce photography or Instagram is Sean Pierce photo. Um, all of like all that racing stuff is still out there. And I do occasionally still, you know, put some racing stuff up on those. Uh, they still exist. Um, it's just not it's not something I spend a lot of time with just because my day to day is so wrapped up with uh, what I'm doing here at this point. Um which is, it's exciting. It's exciting to have a new challenge, you know, and, and push yourself. And when I first started shooting race cars and doing it professionally, I was, I joined a professional photographers association here in, in New Hampshire. And you know, of course it's all portrait and wedding photographers. And I went, yeah, I hate shooting people, you know, but now I love shooting people. I absolutely adore having people in the studio. It's so much fun. So, you know, don't be afraid to push yourself outside of your comfort zone as well. That's an important part of it. You ever feel like you stopped growing and it's getting bored? Yeah, do something. Do something you never thought you'd do, like open a studio. <laughs> Trust me, the stress alone will keep you awake at night. I can't even imagine. But um, Sean, thanks again for taking your time. Um, all the inside information, social media, and everything will be on the description below wherever we're watching this, or if you're watching on the screen, it's on the screen already. Sean, thanks again, brother. I appreciate it. No, oh, thank you. I'm, I'm really happy to do it. Uh, see you at the track, man. Yes, sir. I'll see you Monday weekend. Sean Pierce on the yeah, San Andreas Media Podcast. All right.